If you look at the four circles, you can see that the same amount has been coloured in each circle. So that tells us that one half is equal to two quarters, which is equal to three sixths and is also equal to four eighths. These are called equivalent fractions. Using the whole circle, we can see that two halves is equal to four quarters, which is equal to six sixths, which is equal to eight eighths, which is equal to one whole circle. So although these fractions all look different, they are in fact the same size as each other. And although these fractions all look different, they are in fact the same size as each other. Looking at the pictures of the rectangles in the next example, we can see that one quarter is equal to two eighths, which is equal to four sixteenths. If we look carefully at the one and two on the top of the fractions and four and eight on the bottom, we can see that if we multiply the one by two, we get two. And if we also multiply the four by two, we get eight. Or if we compare the two and the four and also the eight and the 16, we can see that if we multiply the two by two, we get four. And also if we multiply the eight by two, we get 16. So the size of the fraction is not altered if we multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Look at the red and the yellow circles again and compare the half with the 3 sixths. If we multiply the 1 by the 3, we get 3. And also if we multiply the 2 by the 3, we get 6. Now compare the red circle with the orange circle. Or the half with the 4 eighths. If we multiply the 1 by the 4, we get 4. If we also multiply the 2 by the 4, we get 8. Look again at the rectangles and compare the 4 sixteenths with the 1 quarter. We know from the diagram that these two fractions are the same size. By looking at the numbers, if we divide the 4 by the 4, we get 1. If we also divide the 16 by the 4, we get 4. So this shows that the size of the fraction is not altered if the numerator and the denominator are divided by the same number. So we can find missing numerators or denominators of equivalent fractions. Suppose I wanted to write three-fifths as an equivalent fraction in tenths. So I need to work out what the five has been multiplied by to get ten, or five times what makes ten. Since ten divided by five equals two, then the five must have been multiplied by two to get ten. So we will get an equivalent fraction provided we also multiply the numerator by 2. 3 times 2 equals 6, so my equivalent fraction is 6 tenths. Another example, if I start with 12 twentieths and I want my answer in fifths, I need to work out what I have divided the 20 by to get 5. Since 20 divided by 5 equals 4, then divided 20 by 4 gives me 5. Since I've divided the denominator by 4, I must divide the numerator by 4 to get an equivalent fraction. 12 divided by 4 equals 3, so the equivalent fraction is 3 fifths. A multiplication grid can be used to help find the missing numbers. Using the first example, where I wanted to find what I need to multiply 5 by to get 10, I look for 5 on the blue column move along the row until I get to 10, then move up the yellow column until I get to the number 2 on the top blue row. So I need to multiply 5 by 2 to get 10. In the second example, I start at the 5 on the blue column, move along the yellow row until I get to the 20, then move up the yellow column until I get to 4. So I need to divide 20 by 4 to get 5.